Welcome to Cobra Frame Building. Today we are going to do something I haven't done before. Uh, we're going to be welding titanium and we're kind of going to wing it. So let's see how it goes. So I have a fair amount of experience with TIG welding. I'm a certified TIG welder for steel and aluminum, but I haven't done anything with titanium. It's also been about six months since I've really done any real welding. Uh, today, we're gonna see how welding titanium goes. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of research. I haven't done uh, a ton to kind of prepare for this, and we kind of wanted this to be a video where you all get to see kind of my first impressions and what I think about this as I go. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit different than normal. It's not a tutorial, but what you are going to get is kind of my personal reactions to welding titanium for the first time. Now, I've gone through, Joe has a, a collection of titanium scraps. Uh, we've pulled some tubes out of there. I used the miter buddy and the miter daddy. We've mitered up a bunch of tubes, kind of got myself a few sets of practice tubes ready to go. Uh, we're not going to be back purging for this. Uh, we don't really feel it's necessary to do for these practice welds. If I was going to be doing an actual frame, 100% would be back purging this. However, for these practice ones, we're not gonna waste the gas and the extra setup, uh, but we are going to do a few things to kind of get us set. We're gonna make sure our tubes are clean, uh, I'm actually going to be using these uh, new cups for the first time. It's a Furic Jazzy 10. Uh, I've had these, or I just got these, and I wanted to give them a try, so today seemed like as good a time as any to do so. Uh, really, uh, without anything more, let's get into it. Let's see how it goes, and uh, something's going to happen. So I've got my new cups on my torch. We've got everything cleaned. My surface is clean. I've cleaned my parts and I've cleaned my filler rod. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into this. First one I'm going to do is gonna be basically just treating it like I would steel. Uh, I'm gonna run no pulse. Uh, this is 035 and I'm gonna run around 65, 70 amps. And uh, we're just gonna see what happens and go from there. So as far as the tacks are concerned, those really were no different. They look clean. They don't look like they have any real discoloration. Uh, we can see that they are just kind of clean, shiny. And uh, let's go ahead and lay a bead on there and see what happens. So very first impression, uh, I've heard a couple people say it before and now I know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, the filler rod almost seems like it wants to be pulled into the, the base metal. Uh, and if you don't have good control over your filler rod, it does seem to want to kind of stick almost in areas you don't want it to. Uh, but overall, like so far, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna take it just a little bit further and see what we come up with. All right, so we're getting a little bit more discoloration here, and I think that is gonna be largely to do with the fact that we are not back purging. Uh, however, I would expect that I could get a better looking weld on the outside, so I do think I'm probably getting a little too much heat into it. Uh, I think I'm going to let this piece cool off for a moment and uh, maybe make some adjustments, maybe try it with a little bit of a pulse and uh, see if we can get a little bit better results. But I'm definitely, I really like the way the puddle flows out, but I have to say uh, that control with the filler rod needs to be a little bit better. Um, without the way I'm doing it right now, I'm running into a little bit of issues uh, with that filler rod wanting to kind of pull uh, away from where I want it to go. And uh, I think that's just gonna be something that with a little bit more practice, I'll be able to get it sorted out. All right, so now I'm going to uh, keep my amps about the same, but I'm actually going to turn the pulser on and uh, we're gonna try to do a little bit of a lay wire technique. 
with the pulser just to see what we can kind of get out of that. All right, so not terrible. We're gonna turn that pulse down uh, and uh, kind of reassess where we're at. So here's the result from the first weld and really I'm not very happy with it, but it's the first one. We've got some discoloration and some inconsistencies. Uh, we're undercut in some areas. We've definitely put too much heat into it and didn't get enough gas coverage. Uh, the backside here is where I did pulse uh, and it does look a little bit better, but I'm not really happy with it regardless. So we're gonna see if we can make some improvements. All right, so we're trying this again and uh, I've dialed the amp back a little bit and uh, turn the pulser off. Uh, I'm not normally someone who welds with the pulser, so I'm still trying to, it's not even just me reacting to the, the titanium as so much as it is me also uh, working with the pulse. So we're going no pulse and uh, we're just gonna see how this one goes. All right, so I've done the second weld and uh, overall, compared to the first one, I feel quite a bit better about it. I don't know if we can get it to focus there. Uh, I was able to get it to lay out much better and it's, we're looking at this one here. Uh, the thing that we do need to keep in mind though uh, is that there's still a lot of color. Now that color is not really what we want. Uh, this should be nice and shiny silver the whole way through. Uh, this little bit of straw color can be okay, but once we get beyond straw, we don't want that for a titanium weld. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do on this next one for weld number three is I think we're running into a combination of it maybe not being clean enough and then also gas coverage. So we are going to really, really clean it well with Scotch-Brite and acetone, uh, but I'm also going to put on a larger cup so I can really flood that area of the weld and I am going to also use a tinfoil argon dam to try to kind of really hold some gas uh, around that joint and see if we can make the next one look better yet. All right, so we're ready for our third weld. Uh, we've switched up our consumables. We are now running a 16th inch gas lens. I didn't have a 330 seconds uh, that would fit this number 12. So we're running a number 12 cup, 16th inch tungsten. I've turned up our argon just a little bit and we have kind of a tinfoil argon dam that we're going to use and see if we can get a little bit better result this time. So uh, this is definitely working a whole lot better uh, and I'm getting a much better gas coverage. However, I did notice I tried to stretch my weld a little further than what I was comfortable with, with rolling the cup around the joint. And uh, I will say, as soon as you start to really get that torch angle, if you start to lean it over too much and your gas coverage really suffers, uh, I went from having a really nice, beautiful, clean silver weld. And as I started to get that torch angle off, it, uh, it really started to gain some color. So that is gonna be a big thing with this, is making sure that you're keeping your torch angle proper throughout the weld. All right, so we're gonna do weld number four. Weld number three went pretty well. Uh, I definitely had better results, uh, but I got pretty impatient and uh, I just kind of blasted through it and I did keyhole, uh, but that's because I was using poor heat control and uh, I got ahead of myself. So I also didn't have the right miter uh, matched up, but this one's all set. We're gonna try to do a better job with number four actually try to get a good result and uh, we'll see what we can come up with here. So again, we're gonna do no pulse, we're cleaned. Uh, we're using a larger number 12 cup. I've turned up the argon and uh, we're using the tin foil dam. So let's see if we can get some better results this time around. So one thing I should mention is that I am making sure that I'm giving an adequate pre and post flow of the argon on these welds. So before I'm actually striking an arc, I'm allowing that argon to kind of flow and fill that dam. 
uh, before actually striking the arc, as well as allowing it to flow after. All right, so far this is hands down the best weld I've had yet. Uh, I'm really happy with how it's laying out. We've got good gas coverage. Everything is really looking exactly how it should. So I'm gonna keep moving forward and uh, we'll show you guys what this thing looks like. All right, now this is gonna be my last one for tonight. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with how this one came out. Uh, we can see here, I don't know if we can get this to focus, uh, the color is very minimal on this. I did get a little impatient in one spot there, uh, but overall, I feel really good about this weld. We're gonna keep making some improvements and I'll talk about things that I've found that makes a, a big difference, but for me, uh, what I've found is once you kind of get a feel for the puddle control, uh, it's really all about heat management and good gas coverage. Torch angle plays a huge part in this, uh, as well as your consumable choices, uh, cup size, your gas flow. Um, but compared to welding steel, if you can weld uh, a 4130 steel frame, uh, there's no reason to think that you can't work into titanium. Uh, I definitely want to do a lot more practice first and get more comfortable. And you'll see some more of my practice welds here, but I don't think welding a titanium frame is out of the question for me here in the future. So uh, yeah, stay tuned.